So today, Donald Trump's daughter-in-law, Vanessa, was rushed to the hospital in New York City after she received and opened an envelope in the mail containing a powdery white substance. Now, the FBI was called in to investigate. It turned out to be cornstarch, but the damage was done. She was sent to the hospital as a preventive measure, but this terrorized her family, and that's what this is, is terrorism. And it's not the first time something like this was attempted to terrorize somebody on the right, a politician, or a member of their family. I'm sure you all remember the anthrax scares back in 2001. After that, there were several copycat crimes where people who were right-wing lawmakers or, or politicians received powdery substance in the mail addressed to their offices and meant strictly to terrorize them. And some of them included manifestos from far-left individuals. The fact is, is that this just puts us further down that dark path towards civil war. So there's this saying that goes, war is just politics by other means. And that's what I think of when I talk about our, we're going down this path towards civil war. You know, right now our political means are being exhausted. We have a president who we elected the same way we elected every president before him, who's being told he's illegitimate. He's being attacked by the mainstream media, by the deep state, by foreign leaders, and now by his own people. Um, you have people like Rand Paul being attacked by their neighbor for having a different belief than them. And he's a politician. He represents us. That's them exhausting our political means. You have the shootings of Steve Scalise and things like that that have exhausted our political means. You know, trying to remove people from office who might represent us as a group, us Republicans, us on the right. Meanwhile, we have seen during the Obama years the emergence of this radical revolutionary left. And with the help of the mainstream media, we have been divided into these two sort of camps. You have the extreme revolutionary left who have become more and more vocal. And then anyone who is to the right of them or dissents in any way, they might as well be Nazis. They might as well be as far right as you can get because that's the way they are portrayed by the media. Somebody who might hold a view that was popular 20 years ago is now told they're an extremist and that they are a hater. They have no place in society. And they're treated like that. We are ostracized. We're backed into a corner. And Sung Soo said the most dangerous man is one backed into a corner. Um, but we've been restrained. You know, the left have been attacking us, assaulting us. It started with Antifa people throwing rocks and fireworks or hitting people with bike locks. And it's escalated. And this is the path that will bring us to civil war and destruction in this country. And it's by design. So when I say this is by design, what I mean is that opportunists will use subversion to go out and make history repeat itself. And what I mean by that is during the 1960s and 70s, we saw the rise of the militant left. And then it started died down. Come to the Obama years you see the new left rise. These anarchists, these hardcore revolutionary communists who are willing to do violence and destroy property to meet their political ends, to, to push an agenda. And they were involved with this dark alliance with a lot of internationalists, a lot of very wealthy, powerful people were allied with them and have really promoted them in the mainstream media, used social media platforms to shut down anybody they consider reactionary. And... Uh, this is something that was built out of the 1960s and 70s. So when USSR became the world's first communist state, they would send these agents all over the world. And those agents would go into the other countries, capitalist countries, and use subversion to undermine those countries from within. And they would do that here in America. They would go into the media, Hollywood, the State Department, and they would gather intel and try to undermine the United States. And so that's how you end up with McCarthyism. I mean, this was well known. And Senator McCarthy, who I thought was a very brave man, he went after these people, but nobody was listening to him because the mainstream media was already taken over. It was too late. They were calling him a crackpot. But the result of that was what we saw in the 60s and 70s, where Marxist revolutionaries were running amok. You had all these different groups, groups like Black Panthers, groups like uh, Weather Underground, and all these different communist revolutionary fronts, they were terrorizing America and the world. I mean, they were hijacking airplanes, they were robbing banks, they were kidnapping people. In a few instances, they took over federal buildings or government buildings in Europe 
and they would hold hostages and kill people. You had uh, the Weather Underground, who was responsible for all kinds of atrocious actions. And this group, the leaders of that group, are now walking the corridors of power today. You have Bill Ayers, who actively called for the genocide of one-fourth of America's population during his proposed Marxist revolution. And now he is able to shape young minds in a university, and he's starting all these new sort of subversive groups. He's a member of Refused Fascism and, and so on and so forth. You also have people that the mainstream media is celebrating, people like Asada Shakur, who murdered a police officer. So it's by design that we're seeing police officers being murdered right now. There was an attack on cops two days ago, left two police officers dead. That's not by accident. That's what happens when this kind of divisiveness is promoted, when this kind of action is normalized. And so what do we do? You know, people like Bill Ayers, he's out there walking free, promoting his ideology, influencing young minds. How do we stop that without years of subversion to do the same thing they did? And where does that get us? Just divided again. So do we end up with a civil war? Uh, you know, if we are going to have it, I hope we have it during my lifetime before my and before my daughters grow up. I mean, that's really what I hope for. Because, you know, if it's inevitable, then so be it. But let it happen while I'm young enough to do the fighting and not my daughters. I'm out, guys.